Justice. Face first into the apron goes Kane Justice. And for a young man like Kane Justice, it's the first taste of a big match environment. It's a nerve-wracking experience. I was there, I talked to Nick Richards, he was there at one time. Some guys will, and we've got a fight on the floor right now. The first rising generation league champion, the Kamikaze Kid, way back in 2002. Oh. Mm, Dirty hits the post hard. Other notable rising generation league champions early in their careers. Lance Lude, Roy Wilkins, Nick Richards, Andrew Everett, Trevor Lee, and Chet Sterling. So a lot of big name professional wrestlers. Their first major win is this rising generation league tournament. Dirty Daddy aiming to become only the third man in tournament history to successfully defend the title all throughout the tournament. Kane Justice feels he has been overlooked in CWF Mid-Atlantic and he tries to right the wrong here tonight. The student of judo is honing in on that arm, Cecil Scott. Yes, he is, and he's going for the cross off right now, the Judo Gatami, and he's got the hands clasped. Dirty cannot let him have that arm. Dirty Daddy cannot let him, you see him grasping his own hand. Very good, good wrestling from the Dirty Daddy. Maneuvers the shoulders down, but it only gets two. Yeah, Ken Justice brings a much different style than what we're used to seeing here at CWF. He is not a traditional pro wrestler. Well, he started as a traditional pro wrestler. He felt like his career was not advancing fast enough to his liking, so he began studying judo. That was his judo sensei and sparring partners that accompanied Kane Justice to the ring tonight. And he's really been able to utilize those techniques as a way to stand out from the pack. Yes, it is. And I've said in the past, you got to find out who you are as a wrestler, as a, as a performer. And maybe he's done it already. Of course, Justice has got that oh. snap. Oh, hold on. Dirty Daddy may have just snapped. Tony Justice has got that snap arm submission, the twist ending. Oh, beautiful power slam. He's got to cover. Great ring positioning from the rookie only gets to Cecil Scott. That twist ending is as devastating as any hold I've ever seen a rookie utilize in all my years in this sport. Right, especially in this territory. You never see a submission like that, and it is deadly. And Switchblade, no sir, did not get it. The slippery hair of Kane Justice avoids it. Dirty Daddy avoided it. He was going for it right there. Dirty avoided it. Oh no, he's gonna hook him up here. Oh! Dropped him on his head. Two, no. Man, that's a variation. It's kind of teetering on a power driver, but not on the top of the head. But Kane Justice, he's got to stay composed. This is what I was talking about. That first taste of the big match, can you keep your composure? Dirty Daddy has had his arm ripped and now he has been dropped on his head. He will have to clear the cobwebs. Of course, he's used to having those cobwebs from those nights at Studio 54, but that's neither here nor there. Dirty. Oh, drop it. He, he didn't get it. He, he didn't get it. He could not hold him. Oh, kick right to the jaw. Dirty could not hold him on the suplex. Oh, twist no, ending. He's tapping. He's tapping. Instantly. I mean, instantly. Dirty Daddy has a tap. And Kane Justice has won his first major championship. Just like that. That hold is so dangerous. Out of nowhere. Cecil Scott, just that quick. Kane Justice has won his first championship. Come out here! Somebody come on! Anybody left?
Walter Eaton, one half of the now disbanded Goon Squad, and we have got a four-way slugfest here at Battlecade. This is very interesting. Of all the teams the Dawsons could have potentially thought about accepting that challenge, there's no way to think about two guys that have never teamed before. Right, I mean, how could you? And this is going to be a grown man match, Brad Stewart. Walter Eaton just slapped Zane Dawson. I would slap Zane Dawson for anything. Well, if anybody can, it's Walter Eaton, the whoop master. I might would venture a guess here, Cecil Scott. Walter Eaton perhaps on a mission to prove that he does not need the goon squad. Perhaps on a mission to prove that he does have other allies other than his former partner, Roy Williams. Well, if you had told me four years ago that he was going to team with Devin Dalton, I would have called you crazy. Dalton, across the ring here, boom! Man! Collides onto everybody, Eaton's got the cover! Yeah. Only got two. Yeah, these are four hard-hitting dudes. I mean, if you're not familiar with Devin Dalton, he may not be the biggest, but he is a Marine. He hits as hard as anybody. Walter Eaton, the former three-time Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champion, along with Wilkins. Dalton, only a one-time champion with his normal partner, Bobby Wolford. Dalton and Wolford actually ended the first title reign of the Goon Squad back in October of 2011. They settled it all in a bloodbath steel cage match at Ultimate Survivor that year. Cecil Scott, one of the most brutal cage matches in CWF history. These two men were opponents in. Oh! Into the ropes. We had always kind of heard some rumblings. Oh, cover, cover. I had always heard that Walter and the Marines sort of befriended each other after that match. We have never seen any examples of it on a card until just now. But you can attest to it, Cecil Scott. Sometimes when you go to war with someone, it just does a strange thing to your relationship. Yeah, you see it all the time. You know, you just kind of gain a new level of respect for each other. And we've seen tag teams form like that many times. Oh, Big Dave with that 300 pounds. And these are just two of the nastiest dudes, these Dawsons, and they've been calling people out. They were really pissed that they didn't get the tag team title match tonight. Right, tag team titles will be going on the line later in this hour as Mecha Mercenary and Aaron Biggs defend against Dan O'Hare and Schlack from Combat Zone Wrestling. Not crazy about Schlack being here, but Not at all, but they did beat the champions at Survivor. We gotta talk about that. There's an eight-man tag team matchup. O'Hare and Schlack pretty much double-crossed the Dawson right. and stole the pin on the champions to justify that tag team title opportunity here later in this hour. Right, I, I kind of get the feeling that Dawson's one of the three-way, if, if possible in that case, but here we are. If they win here, great double team from the Bruising Brothers from the Carolina Coast. If the Dawson's win here, it actually kind of sweetens the pot for what they asked for. They will have beaten two former Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions and not just one tandem. Like I said, Dalton and Eaton have never teamed together before, to my knowledge. But if the Dawsons win this, oh. they defeat one half of Super Ferocious and they defeat one half of the Goon Squad. Four Tag Team Championships between these two men. Absolutely, and that's the name of the game. You want those title shots, you win matches. Dawson's trying to manipulate rookie referee Josh Bear in there. Dave Dawson trying to eye gouge everybody. Right, the Dawsons are veterans. They know when a referee hasn't been seasoned as much as somebody like a Red Jones or a Charles Richardson. Shout out to Josh Bear from the City of Middle Eight Dojo making his Battle Cade debut tonight. Absolutely, we've all been there. Dawson's absolutely will have the edge in teamwork, as you said. Two guys who have literally been partners since birth. I guess two guys who have never been partners. Dalton is trying to make something happen here. Dalton is trying to make an opening here. 
Yeah, Dalton's gonna have the quickness edge, and he's using it. Oh, he sent the brothers right into each other. Only the ropes keeping Dave Dawson up at that point. He's gonna make that tag. Yes, he does. He has broken three. The Whoopmaster, Walter Eaton, the former Mid-Atlantic champion, the former Weaver Cup tournament champion is in. One of the most decorated wrestlers in CWF history and one of the heaviest hitters. Yes, sir. When we talk about CWF originals, he defies the freeze. He took both Dawson's down. Eaton and Zane Dawson, both masters of the Lariat. We will see if that comes into play at all in this matchup. Man, Walter's in great shape right now, too. Probably the best shape we've seen him in a long time. Both men are slugging away at both Dawson's. Is this what you have to do, Cecil Scott? You have to isolate one, neutralize one, and keep dealing on the other. You absolutely don't want him to be able to double team you like this. <clears throat> Maybe it won't matter. Walter's going to keep fighting. We have, we have heard so much flesh slap in this one. Oh, Lariat! Oh, the Lariat! I want to oh, creep him with the Lariat! The Dawsons have beaten two former Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions. The Dawsons have staked their claim for the belts. The Dawsons stand tall. Five minutes, ten seconds. Who wins by pinfall? The Dawson Brothers! Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the last story time that I do because the final chapter will about to be told. You see, this rivalry goes back a very long time. You see, me and Trevor Lee, we were like brothers at one time. But the fact is, and what he forgets, is that Trevor Lee would never be Mid-Atlantic heavyweight champion, if it wasn't for me. You know, everybody talks about this great match, the best match of the year, the best match of the century, Trevor Lee and Roy Wilkins, 105 minutes. But what everybody forgets is the end of the match. Everybody forgets who actually gave Trevor Lee the Mid-Atlantic championship, who actually handed it to him on a silver platter. And that was me. Go back and watch the footage. I was the one who kept Coach Gemini from getting in the ring. I was the one who held him where our Roy Wilkins tapped out. But you see, this goes back much, much further than that. I won't even bring up the fact that I've already faced Trevor Lee at Battle Cave before when I was a surprise entrant and he was TV champion. He didn't beat me then. He survived. He survived a 10-minute time limit. I won't even talk about that. I won't even talk about the fact that last August, when I was Mid-Atlantic champion, and I had the choice to pick any opponent that I wanted to, and I got a lot of buddies. I got a lot of buddies that are really good at this thing we call wrestling and would love a payday. Instead, I picked Trevor Lee. I picked him because I respected him, and I wanted to test myself, and I beat him. I beat him. It took me 45 minutes, but I beat him. And this year, this year, while he's champion because of me, he gets that opportunity. He gets to pick whoever he wants. And you know who he picked? He picked Jesse Adler, a rookie. A guy who can't last two years in this business. That's a slap in my face. You know what, Trev? We used to be brothers. We used to be closer than close, you know? But that's out the window. Everybody wants to ask, and they've asked me for the past six months, why I did what I did. And I've given you the reasons. I've talked about it. But one thing I haven't talked about is the straw that broke the camel's back. And I'll let you know that. It was Las Vegas, Nevada. Earlier this year. You see, me and Trevor were like brothers. I invited him to my wedding. 
And I'm not even talking about the fact that he comes dressed to my wedding in shorts and a fanny pack and tennis shoes. I'm not even talking about that. That doesn't matter. I'm not talking about the fact that when we took this group picture, he's nowhere to be found. You know why? He left early. But I've always known that he was a cocky prick that only cared about himself. It wasn't that. The straw that broke the camel's back. The reason for this all is out of all the talent that I had at this wedding, after all, it's a who's who of professional wrestling. You've got the TNA world champion Eddie Edwards. You've got, I don't know how many times, world champion Dolph Ziggler. You've got Roderick Strong, Kenny King. You've got everybody. I had someone attend my wedding who came up to me and they said, wow, I can't believe Trevor Lee is here. <laughs> that's why I did what I did. And that's why I will continue to do what I do. That's why at Battlecade, the myth of Trevor Lee will be destroyed. is not a part of this match. He's not a part of this card. And Cyrus getting to Smith Garrett. I don't, we gotta get Cyrus out of here. Pierce, somebody gotta get Cyrus out. Oh, he said he's done. He's done. Well, he kicked Garrett right in the head. I did see that. A man with a history of concussions just got stuck right there in his back. Well, what is this? A oh, this? Oh, 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 the ramp. Oh, oh, the ramp. The DUI. The double underhook and Taylor. Oh, my God. Come on. We got help out here for Smith Garrett. We're supposed to have a championship match here. This is all great if you're Eric Andrews. He could care less. What are you doing? Get out of here. Let's go. Go. You're going to stop me? You're not. I give everyone here a face. I give them a face. Man, we're trying to get Cyrus out of here so we can get some help for Smith Garrett. And we got officials out here trying to get him out. I saw William Cross. We got to get, get Cyrus out of here. What are we doing? Do we have a match? Fans, we got total chaos right now. I don't know if we're going to have a TV title match. Or... Hey! Hey! What would it say? I'm going to hey, face Smith Garrett. Bring that bell and count him out. What? Bring that bell you got to be kidding me. Smith Garrett demanding a count out. Eric Andrews, I apologize, demanding a count out here. Pierce is going to ring the bell. He's ringing the bell. One! Two! So, it looks like we're going to have a count out victory for Eric Andrews at Battlecade. Count is up to four. Smith Garrett is not responsive. This is garbage, Brad. We got guys checking off Smith Garrett. Smith Garrett not responsive. Yeah. 
Whoa! Oh, is he moving? Whoa! Holy crap! Smith Garrett is crawling! William Cross is trying William Cross is trying to stop him. Smith Garrett is crawling towards the ring! Wait, we've gotta be careful here! This is a man with a history of concussions. We've got to be careful. Yeah, and we're less than a, a year removed from him having a major concussion. Oh, no, is he? Smith Garrett's in. Oh, my God, Smith Garrett's in the ring. Smith Garrett is in the ring. He must be able to answer the referee's commands. The referee must establish that Smith Garrett can defend himself. He must be responsive to the official. Right, Pierce has the right to stop it right now. You want to keep going? Come on. Smith has got to answer him. Smith Garrett must answer the official. He must answer the official. Stop the damn match! Oh, there's your answer. Smith Garrett is hurt. Smith Garrett is hurt. Bad. It already, it already, it already. Man, Eric Hansen, oh. this is a dangerous man to go into a match hurt with. Andrew storms into the corner. And man, if Andrews hits too many unanswered blows, this could become a real dangerous situation, Cecil Scott. It's already a dangerous situation. And you know Andrews is not going below the neck with his offense. Smith Garrett has a history of concussions. He and Xyrus have been at odds. They have been at odds ever since October's CWF Rumble. Woo! Woo, a near fall. Woo, a near fall. We're in a situation where basic moves like clotheslines are potential match enders. Smith Garrett is so drained. He is so hurt. Any move can potentially end this thing. Side slam. God, this is not smart. This is cover, cover! Oh. This is not smart for Smith Garrett at all. We've known for a long time. He wears his heart on his sleeve. But damn, this kid is tough. This kid wants it. He wants to be the worldwide television champion again. Yeah, we know he's never going to quit. That television title drives him. The, the quest for it drives him. You, Garrett, is hurt bad. He's being measured right now. Oh, what a kick! What a spin kick to the gut! Man, that is an opening for Smith Garrett. Can he capitalize? Oh, big clothesline for Garrett! And does Smith Garrett have anything in the tank right now? He may have just thrown everything he has left out there. Champion and challenger. Whoa, rolling elbow! He stuck him on the elbow! Cover! To all those long legs of Eric Andrews. Those long legs of Eric Andrews just saved the title. Of course, Garrett won this title one year ago tonight from Cedric Alexander. Eric Andrews captured Hero Garrett in a triple threat match back in June of Absolute Justice six months ago. Smith Garrett has never had a one-on-one -on -one rematch for the title until tonight. And Cecil Scott and Cyrus trying to steal it away from him here on our biggest night of the year. Look at this man. Smith Garrett is still fighting. Yeah, he's still fighting. He may have been somewhat even up here. Andrews on rubber legs. Smith Mountain. Oh, he can hold him. He can hold him. Oh, no. Asphalt spike. The back of Garrett went out. Oh, the asphalt spike. Two. Damn it. Huge assist to Cyrus here, though, Brad. Monumental assist. Smith Garrett barely ever got out of the gate here. Oh, Brad, what the hell? Cyrus, right in my face. Microphones are picking Xyrus up here. Xyrus with fire in his eyes, talking trash to me. Demanded a match with Smith Gary.
hip. <coughs> and right, if you were like, like, if this one's going up on lunch here, the little things that makes you money, it's the little things that make people talk about you. No matter what, it's still gonna hurt. Auditorium is the number one venue for live pro wrestling in all of the Carolinas. But did you know that you can also rent the Sportatorium for all of your anniversaries, fundraisers, and live pro wrestling birthday parties? Check us out at CWF247.com to find out more about how you can have your event right here at the Sportatorium. <laughs>
each week, we will be bringing you all the action from our anniversary super card over three huge weeks of CWF Worldwide and huge, huge ramifications for this one. A lot of talk about tag team competition coming up in the first quarter of 2017. Whoever leaves Battlecade, the Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions will put themselves in great, great position for those huge events that are rumored to be taking place in the first quarter of 2017. Absolutely. You and I have been talking about that a little bit. There's some big things around the corner potentially. And big humans in the ring right now. And it's a big scare down the hair. Uh, not as experienced as a Mecha Mercenary, but is as tough as anybody. <laughs> right, O'Hare and Schlag are both products of the Combat Zone Wrestling Dojo. Whoa! Trip up! Oh! Oh! Mecha and Biggs, both products of the CWL Mid-Atlantic Dojo. And we spoke earlier about Dalton and Eaton. These are two former rivals that came together and, and formed a, an incredible unit. Right, just like our friend Brian Hughes said, yeah, by really. their powers combined has come one of the most dominant tag teams we have ever seen. And here comes this wild man, Shellac. The most terrifying human on earth. And one of the few men that, he's not the biggest man out there, but maybe the only man his size that can physically match Biggs and Mercenary. This man is a powerhouse. Yes, he is. Of course, we first saw O'Hare and Schlatt back in October at the CWF Rumble. They would return in November at Ultimate Survivor. We touched on this earlier. They basically stole the pin from the Dawsons in that tag team elimination match to earn this title opportunity, but Schlag is paying for it now. Yes, sir, this crowd is just as hungry as the Savage Squad. Oh, hungry for chops tonight. And what a great crowd we've got here at Battle Cade. Everybody's fired up. And the Sandwich Squad looking to go ahead and make short order of the storm of entrail here. We might get a double team. Oh, double team, Gord Buster. And the storm of Entrail have not been able to get out of the blocks here, Brad. Well, they have not. The tag team champions defending the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium in what has become a bit of an East Coast turf war. Yes, yeah, started back at the Rumble. Huge clothesline. And it's even gone as far up to Northern Virginia with Nova. They've done battle up there. And the storm of Entrail may be all over the ring right now, if you know what I mean. The rampaging beast stalking the dangerous schlack. This is what you gotta do with a dangerous team like this. You gotta get on them early. Right, precisely. Oh, O'Hare. O'Hare with the advantage on the outside. They're taking out those legs. That's what you gotta do. Mecca and Biggs have been damn near untouchable since they captured the Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Championship from the assassin Ray Kandrak and Eric Royal back in June. At the time, we thought Kandrak and Royal were absolutely unbeatable. Oh my God, no way. God, no. Oh God. These are two powerful dudes, but that's 400 pounds. Come on, one and one. Oh, great thinking. O'Hare caught him low. Schlack caught him in the back of the head. Yeah, this is what this match has got to be if you're slacking O'Hare. This has got to be a fist fight. And they have managed to isolate Aaron Biggs here. And they got to keep him down on the ground. Once he gets vertical, he becomes dangerous again. O'Hare slugging away. Oh, just a, that's, that's what I'm talking about with these guys. Just a running head start and a boot to the side of the head. Where we got, they're gonna stay. They gotta kind of stay focused on one part of this body here. They can't go from head to toe with a man like Biggs. And now they're just taking turns on the legs. Referee, this, this young referee trying to get one of these men out of here and having a hard time. Schlack going to work on that left leg. You may bite the thing off the ankle if you're not careful. 
Referee says it did not submit. I don't expect it to, but this is going to do a lot of damage. And, and there you go. Bite the foot is Schlag. Crowd chant eating. Schlag going to eat the foot of Eric Biggs. Come on, let's go the foot. And now this team is making quick tags, keeping the fresh man in. They've turned this match around quite well. And Eric Biggs, you take away those legs, it takes away a lot of his offense. He can't build momentum. With hair, they have isolated the big man. I say the big man, they're both pretty goddamn big. But Biggs, he's such a momentum wrestler. He gets his weight moving, and with that leg gone, we've seen it with other men in the past take that leg out. He has a lot of trouble getting going. O'Hare slugs away. They've really put a stop to the champions here, have the teams in combat zone wrestling. And not only have they stopped the champions, but if you listen to the room, if you feel the energy in this room, they've really halted all that momentum that the champions have built up. Oh, the pair's going up. Whoa! Huge drop kick. I mean, a huge drop kick. That's a big man coming off that top rope. Yes, he is. Was there a tag? Was there a tag? Referee did not see the tag. Oh, man. And that's what we're talking about, the young referee, uh, inexperienced ref, but Schleit back in making the cover. Yeah, you're right. It's just like a rookie wrestler, a rookie referee will make more mistakes. I, I, I gotta be honest, I didn't catch if there was a tag or not. If there was, though, that's a big break for the champions. Yeah, huge break, and referees get most of the calls right, but we always notice the ones that they don't, unfortunately. If there was, there's a tag. Dan O'Hare is absolutely the legal man now, which means Schlack must get back to the apron. And this thing is just really grinding to a halt here. Schlack looks like he's about ready to eat a turnbuckle on the outside. Wait, what are they doing? Both men have turned. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, God. They just crushed one half of the Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions! Cover two! No! How on earth did that not end it? They just crushed the Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions, and I'm not sure, but I think they made another switch. O'Hare and Schlack are manipulating this rookie referee. Well, there was another tag in the corner there, so it's kind of a moot point right now. They want to make sure that this rookie referee, Josh Bear, is as confused as he possibly can be. Again, they tried this earlier and it didn't work. I, I just don't know if it can happen. I just don't know. Biggs, oh God! Oh my God, the power of the rampaging beast! That's got to be close to 500 pounds! But Aaron Biggs just suplexed single-handedly! The challengers had a great game plan and got away from it! Can he make this tag to make a mercenary? Yes, he can. Oh, man. Mecca looks hungry. And he is just leveling anything that moves here. Man, he's cooking right now. Good Lord, the ring is shifting with everything that the monstrous Mecca does. And he is fresh as a daisy. He has not been in this ring. Black hole slam. That's the Black Forest slam. Cover. Only got two. Once again, this plays into the strategy of the Storm of Entrails. They have manipulated the official. Referee Josh Fair may have lost track of who's legal. Oh, he's got one of them. Well, if you're back, you just take them both out to solve the issue right there. The, 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 the Hellcat jumped on the back of Mecca. Trying to cause a diversion. Oh, hold on. See our party. See our party. Get some revenge on Riley. Oh, oh no. Oh, God, no, no, please, no. Oh, Schlag has got CL. Watch out. Oh, hero sandwich. They drilled it with the hero sandwich. Oh, hair swinging a miss. Oh, that's a murder. Crush him. Champions retain a fight against a team from CZW. What an incredible first week of action from Battle Kane. The champions retain their main event. We'll be back next week with more action from Battle Kane 17. Who broke the win?
Come to Impact, man! 